Hello everyone. So this is just a quick video on um, one of the exercises that I do, that I still do. I oftentimes go back to basic exercises just to get my fingers wiggling and you know moving around and oiled up. Um, yeah, it's just something that I do quickly. Sometimes I implement it into my uh, my practices. Um, I oftentimes put on a metronome or a loop like a music loop like a drum loop or something like that and I'll just run exercises on top of that loop um, it's just a method it's not for everybody um, but it does work for me now I do warn you this is one of those exercises that personally I if I do it for too long I get I start to get drowsy <laughs> I start to get drowsy while I'm doing it because it's like it's so repetitive but when I'm getting drowsy I force myself to get through the entire neck it's sort of a chromatic exercise um, like a four finger chromatic exercise on each string and it goes up the neck it's not a brand new exercise but for those of you who it is new uh, maybe for you it's new um, this is just something that I do, okay? Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate it. It's gonna be at a moderate tempo and not too slow because it'll take a long time to get through or probably too long for you to hold your attention to. So I'm gonna demonstrate, all right? Here we go. All right, so this is the beginning of the exercise. And I'm just going on up the neck. As you can see, I'm fairly keeping my fingers close to the strings. I'm not lifting my fingers up too high. If you lift your fingers up too high, that can that can tire tire you out pretty quickly. And notice how if I didn't get a note out for whatever particular reason. I'm making very minor adjustments to make sure that the note does come out, that the note rings out. I'm also making sure that I'm muting the strings as I'm doing it. Whenever I notice myself allowing for a note to ring out, I use the tip of my index finger to mute the previous string that I played. And I'm doing it as I'm fretting each note. So I mean, that's pretty much how I'm doing it. I mean, you're, you're hearing some ringing, but not a lot of ringing. I had a little run on right there, a hammer on right there. Now right here, I'm starting to feel tense. <laughs> and I'm, I'm wanting to stop. keep going because I want to get all the way back to the the part where um, I want to get all the way back up to the nut to the head stop As I'm tensing up, I'm tempted to, you know, it, well, it's sort of forcing me not to play on the rhythm that I need to play. And I actually have a metronome playing while I'm doing this. And I'm trying to stay on the tempo of the metronome. see um, and you start to feel, feel yourself sort of tense up probably midway like once once I get up here um, you know I start to tense up a little bit and 
that's that's what you're uh, searching for. That's what you're actually pursuing. You want to pursue the the tension a little bit and then fight through the tension because on the other side of that, you your your fingers start to loosen up a little bit and your dexterity is a little better. Um, it's not the same as practicing regular like major and minor scales it's not the same as that but you know it forces you to um, not pick your fingers up too high and you know to keep your fingers fairly close to the fretboard fairly close to your, to your strings um, and I don't know if you noticed but I, I was making adjustments as I was going up the neck um, if I, if I missed a note, if I missed picking it, or if I did like a hammer on mistakenly or something like that, I made that adjustment during that. So it's not meant to sound perfect all the way through the exercise, but it is to, um, it is something that helps you to, first of all, keep going, don't stop. Um, I have a tendency to want to do certain parts over, which I think is good for whatever exercise you want to implement, implement that into. But for this particular exercise, I tend to go from the top all the way to the bottom and don't stop and make adjustments while I'm doing it because you know if you're playing in a live situation you don't want your pick to fall out of your hand or sometimes you have to switch your pick position from this to this and knowing how to do that while you're picking is a skill in itself so you're like changing the, the angles and like this or like this um, as you're picking, um, relaxing it, tightening, tightening your grip on your pick, um, and whether you're doing economy picking or alternate picking or hybrid picking, um, so knowing how to adjust while you're playing is really um, important. And um, I'll be uploading a, a few other exercises that is 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 purely just an exercise so that when it's time to actually play you're not getting tired basically and if you do get tired you're not afraid of the tension and you can get through that um you, you know your, your muscles tightening up and everything because you learn how to relax in the process you feel yourself tense up and then it's like okay relax and you tell yourself to relax and you actually relax so that's that's pretty much it you know it was just something i wanted to share and um you know there'll be there will be more lessons and, and tips on what I do as well as what I've observed and, and, and you know just things that I found out throughout um, me playing guitar for, for production reasons and and in, in live scenarios all right I hope that this was info, uh, informative for you all right I'll check y'all out later Peace.